is this camera the next GoPro killer? Or is it really a GoPro killer? Let's find out. It's time to get plugged in. So I've been using GoPros for about a decade. I have the GoPro 3, a GoPro 4, uh, somewhere I have a 5 and a 6, here's a 7, um, a 9, 10. I don't have the 11 or the 12 yet, but uh, I've been using GoPros for a long time and they're very useful. I mean, there's lots of underwater filming that I've done. Um, I've connected them to cars, I've connected them to remote control vehicles, I've connected them to remote control boats, all kinds of stuff. So many fun ways to use GoPros, but they're not perfect. And in fact, in today's world, you have to wonder, do I want to use my GoPro or do I want to use my phone? Because the early technology, GoPros are pretty advanced. But then I feel right around, I don't know, maybe seven or eight, they kind of stagnated. They put these cool screens on the front, but the sensor really never took off. I mean, they've increased the sensor size, so now they're using a one over one seven. Um, but still, it's not going to work that great in dark areas. So last year I went with the DJI Action 3. Um, and in many ways, it's just about the equivalent of the GoPro, except one that I like better. The microphone on the Action 3 actually drained water a little quicker so that you didn't get the sound like you do on the GoPro, uh, which just drove me nuts. Because you never know when the microphone is like, got water on it and when it doesn't. So I use the Action 3 in wetter environments instead of the GoPro, but I used them about the same amount. Now we have the DJI Action 4, um, which is really in my book a game changer because while the GoPro used a smaller sensor for years, the GoPro 12 has a 1 over 1.7 inch, which is still not quite huge, but it's not terrible. The Action 4 is a 1 over 1.3 inch sensor. So it's not a one inch sensor, but it's getting closer. And in fact, it's about double the size of what you would get in the new GoPro Hero 11. Now, why is that important? Well, this guy right here, you know what this is? This is my Panasonic GH6 on a gimbal. So it's on a DJI gimbal. Why is that important? Well, this is what the camera I've used most of the time. I, I like to film with it. I can follow things around and it can move. It's got a micro four-third sensor, which is bigger than one inch. It's four over three. Um, so what it, that does is it gives you things like better dynamic range, a better depth of field, lots of things that are really kind of important to me um, when I'm making video. It really improves the camera quality, or the, the image quality. So I can film in a little darker areas. Now it's not a full frame sensor, but um, it does have advantages. So let's back up a little bit. Why do you use a smaller sensor? Well, if you think of a sensor as a little square, that's how the light comes into the camera. The bigger the sensor, the more light it takes. So therefore, a darker environment is handled better with a larger sensor. Something like the uh, Nikon D850 or the Canon equivalent or the Sony equivalent. Those have huge sensors so they can suck in lots of light. You can have a real shallow depth of field, um, be able to film in dark areas, and have good dynamic range. What's dynamic range? Well, if you think of one area being completely bright and one area being completely dark, the amount of space between it is the dynamic range, okay? So something with a smaller sensor, that area is going to be smaller. So things are going to be washed out white over here in the sunlight, but then the shadows aren't going to give you much detail. When you have a bigger sensor, the area expands. So the things that were white before start to show some detail. While the dark stuff, well again, you can pull that information out of the shadows. The disadvantage of that is all of that sensor, all that information has to be written to a memory card. And the more information you write into a memory card, things happen. Battery life heat, data transfer, all that stuff has to be compressed and put onto the memory card. It's going to generate heat from the sensor and the processor, um, and that's why some cameras overheat and shut down. Um, so it creates a whole bunch of other issues. So one way area to, to fix that is they just go, hey, we'll use a small sensor and, and 
we don't have to worry about all that data. You give up light performance and you give up some other things, but you get some practical performance issues improvements as well. So sorry for the physics lessons on it. What does it make with, with this DJI Action 4? Why is it better? Well, it's got a bigger sensor, so that dynamic range has expanded. Okay? And you get that without giving up battery life, really, that I've noticed. Um, it doesn't have recording limits, so I record at 4K at 60 frames per second, and it never shut off. So, so that's that's great. And also, if you look at my DJI, my GH6 on my gimbal here, right? Pretty fancy, fancy. Fa and this is a pretty expensive setup right here. Um, the stabilization on this Action 4 is actually might be better than this. It's pretty darn good. Um, and this is waterproof. I'm not going to stick this gimbal in any water. I really don't want it to be around rain. Uh, this right here goes right into my little filming backpack. No problem. This right here, not so easy to transfer. Uh, like uh, taking it on an airplane, not fun. Not fun. Uh, you got to find some places to put the microphone, the lens, the camera, the gimbal, all that stuff. It's a pain in the butt. This guy, easy. Doesn't mean I don't take this where I travel, um, but if there's times when I don't need it, then I'm not gonna take it. So that is why I sometimes choose an action camera. When it's outside, and it's not a perfect environment, that big camera ain't going. I take an action camera. But I still want the best possible performance. I don't want to sacrifice image quality, microphone quality, all of that more than I have to. Now, it's not gonna be the same, but it's still not bad. Let's look at some examples of the quality of the uh, Action 4 versus the Action 3. Now, since I don't have the most recent GoPro, DJI sent me these cameras. GoPro hasn't. So I don't have the, um, the GoPro 11 or 12. So I'm not going to uh, kind of um, compare it to the 10 because I don't think it's a fair assumption. But I will say, based on the specs, I like the Action 4 better from what it's going to show me. So anyhow, let's go to it. So let's go over operation of the camera. Right now we're in 4K, 60 frames per second. So one of the things with this camera is that when it is 4K, 60 frames per second, you can only use one of the two screens. I'm assuming it's because of the amount of processing power that's required to make it work. And you don't want to overheat the, the camera or uh, drain the battery. So you can switch the cameras by just pulling up and now you're ready to go. Now battery life, pretty pretty solid. Again, it, it's very close to the Action 3. It's the same battery, they're hot swappable, so uh, that works really well. There's not a recording limit, so I've done videos of right around 20 minutes in 4K, 60 frames per second, and I've not had any stoppage due to um, uh, the camera getting too hot, so that's definitely a plus. So again, how do you get to the menus? Well, we're going to turn the camera off, I'm recording, swipe up, and then you can see the menus. So we're at 60, at 16.9, and then you can change it off, even up to 120, which is pretty, pretty good. Slide to the right for video versus pictures, pull down for different modes. Um, so this works really well. Now, if your fingers are wet, or you're kind of like fumbling around, it, Sometimes I find in the field that uh, menus on the backs of these phones, or these cameras, don't really work that great. Um, but this one's pretty fair. If you turn it around to the front, you'll see that it's got a front mount camera, or I'm sorry, a front mount display, which is good for selfie mode. So you can kind of walk and see what you're uh, recording when, it, when you're doing a, kind of like a selfie. Uh, and then one of the other things I really enjoy about the uh, the DJI line is that it actually has a magnet mount. So you see right here, you just put it on and it sticks. Now I did have a, a, an issue with the Action 3 that it kind of rattled a little bit. It wasn't a big deal, but it wasn't exactly uh, ideal for me. Another great thing about the Action 4 is that it will automatically go into vertical mode. So if you want to do uh, your, your favorite TikTok dance, you can go vertical or for YouTube, Boom, you're in 16.9, ready to go. So again, vertical, horizontal. Pretty awesome, really. 
And again, the stability of the camera, um, depending on the mode you're in, is, is top notch. It works as well as my um, as my uh, gimbal. So you can kind of look through the modes, and you're ready to go. So here's a comparison between the Action 3 and the Action 4. On the right, you can see the Action 3. If you look in the leaves, you can see how they get a little bright and washed out, where the Action 4 actually captures more of the detail. Now with the DJI Action 4, the stabilization is actually really good. So I'm walking pretty rapidly, and you can tell that you know there's very little motion on here. It actually performs about as well as a camera like my GH6 on a DJI gimbal. So pretty good. And again, you can see the difference once you have a bright area mixed with a dark area. This is where the larger sensor actually starts to really help with the improved dynamic range. Okay, so we saw some different uh, uh, footages, how it stabilizes. We've seen um, uh, some of the menus and how you can scroll through the menus. No action camera has a great menu setup. I'll tell you that right off the bat. And one other thing, with the Action 4, make sure you register it prior to going out to doing video or photos. You know why? Because you have to do that or it won't, you get like three or four times and then the camera just won't work. And if you're in a remote spot, like I found that I was the last time I, I used it, and you don't have cell phone service, you're out of luck, right? You don't want that. So go ahead, register it, it's kind of a quirk with all DJI products. They want you to register it. And so whether you're using an, an Osmo, a, a Mavic drone, any of the devices, they're going to want you to register it. So be, keep that in mind. If you're one of those anti-registration people, maybe just don't, don't get a DJI camera. But otherwise, do it beforehand. And know that you have to do it. Well, my final thoughts on it. Is it plugged in? In my, I'm going to say absolutely. From the footage I've shot with this, various locations, I love it. Uh, it just, you can go vertical, you can go horizontal, so it's good for both formats. Um, image quality is good, microphone quality is good. Uh, I like the bigger sensor. Now, I'm not going to use it indoors very often. I just, you know, I've got other cameras for that, and those are the cameras I'm going to usually use. But, like, you know what? It's pretty darn good, and in fact... I don't see me using these GoPros anymore. I mean, if the GoPro 12 turns out to be a great product, maybe I get one, but otherwise, I'm gonna be filming with these DJI Actions cameras probably from now on. Um, they've just kind of taken over. So anyhow, if you have any questions, shoot me a comment and I'll be happy to try to answer them. Um, I didn't give the full spec review on everything. This is more of an opinion piece on just People are getting started on this stuff. If you want a good action camera at a pretty decent price, hey, this is what I would choose. So now, thanks for getting plugged in. Have a great day.